here I am, as a 34-year-old man, um, having never seen or read anything to do with Harry Potter. Just incredible. I mean, it'd be one thing for you not to have read it or seen the films, but the fact that you know nothing about Harry Potter is staggering. Even by osmosis, you would have thought you'd have picked something up. I think once you get past a certain threshold, it becomes almost a... Um, what's the way to describe it? it? It becomes... What does it become? I don't know how to finish that sentence now I've said it. It, it just becomes something that the young people do. It, it becomes something where you can easily close your mind off to it and not absorb <laughs> not absorb any of it. It's just like, okay, that is Harry Potter gibberish. Therefore, like like I, I know of words. So there's <laughs> so I know all the key characters. Give me your words. Give me I, the words, Dan. I thought I thought Dumbledore was um the actor played by uh Robbie Coltrane. <laughs> uh, was a character played by Robbie Coltrane. Um I knew um God, I can't even remember his name now. Uh, the who's the evil one? Voldemort. I knew Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Knew Hogwarts. I knew um, uh, the names of the houses, and that was pretty much it. I think um, knew uh, Quidditch, but e even after watching the films, I have no idea what the rules of Quidditch are. Yeah, if the if the Snitch is worth 150 points and it wins the game immediately. Then why what is even the point bother of the, the Yeah, exactly. That's that is exactly what I was asking myself mm -hmm. as I was watching. I couldn't get my head around it, and and I wondered if if that was just me. <laughs> I was like, no, no, it's a general thing. People will try and defend it. Will say, well, actually, the more skilled players will be able to rack up like points by by the time you get to the snitch. But it's like, yeah, but it's it's 150, 150 points. It's like in football. You know, each goal is worth 10 points, but if there's a special ball and you only need to touch it and it gives you 150 points, no one's going to score 15 goals in the amount of time it takes for you to get this one ball. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Quidditch is stupid. <laughs> I know I know that officially for a fact now. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't want to play it in the park on brooms like people do? Well, it just kind of looked a bit like hockey to me in how aggressive and violent hockey is. If you think it's just kids running around a field with sticks battering each other and elbowing each other in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those things have like knobs on them, don't they? They're like proper like um what do you call it? cudgels almost. Yeah, yeah. I, I I used to play hockey. It's a really, you know, aggressive game. If you if you get hit with a ball or a stick, you know about it. Oh, I meant the uh, for, for the beaters sticks in Harry Potter. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of weird northern street hockey you were playing. <laughs> Winner keeps all the banana bread. <laughs> we got all the stereotypes here. <laughs> I don't know how many other northerners have relate to banana bread, actually, but uh, that, that's like specific to my family, so I'll take it. Ah. Okay. Well, you're the the only northern family I know. So yeah. ah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so back to Harry Potter and what I knew about Harry Potter. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I think I pretty much explained or, or or reeled off everything I did know about it. Uh, characters: uh, Dumbledore is Robbie Coltrane. Um, <laughs> Quidditch. Uh, I knew the uh, the slick haired kid. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I think that's it. So. So yeah, m my history. I mean, it's. I was talking to you about this throughout the week. So. Mm. Uh, just for the people that obviously aren't. Uh, um, eavesdropping on our, on, our on our, our conversation. Yeah, it's. Uh, <sighs> there is a, sl a sliding doors scenario where I. And bought Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Is it Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone? Cause... It's Philosophers in England and it's Amer uh, Sorcerers in America, if you're stupid and fat. Right, okay. I did wonder about that because I saw uh, we had subtitles on and the subtitles said Sorcerers, but they were mm. clearly saying Philosophers out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> so, anyway, so there is a sliding doors 
scenario in my life where uh, I get bought Harry Potter for Christmas and I become the biggest Harry Potter fan, you know, one of the biggest Harry Potter fans going because uh, in 1997, when the book was released, I was exactly the same age as Harry was in the books. 10 going on 11. And so it was geared, it was geared towards me. It was geared towards my age group, my demographic. And that's something that's kind of hit home as I've been researching it. Um, but for whatever reason, um, my my path never crossed uh, with the with the series. I was too focused on video games at that point. Ninety seven was when uh, the Nintendo sixty four was released, and it's when I um, received it for Christmas that year um, with Diddy Kong Racing and, and Goldeneye. And I kind of never never looked back. I, I told a story in the in the um, gaming memories. I think it's episode three of this that. Uh, uh, we went away during that summer of 97 and I bought a Nintendo magazine and never looked back. And uh, obviously, a, a, a boy's allowed Until to Until recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, a, a boy's allowed to have more than one hobby. So I, I could read and have an interest in Nintendo. But Ooh, get you. Get me. You had money when you were a kid, splashing <laughs> it about with your interests. <laughs> but uh, But essentially, yeah, so... Uh, all, all my efforts were putting to gaming and reading about games and magazines and and writing about games and all that type of thing. That that's what took up my 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 spare time. Um, and so it was only from what I can remember when the hoopla around the first film uh, began to when the cogs began to whir and all that media stuff kind of began to came out come out was when i first heard about the series and i think they were already like three or four books in by that point were they yeah the uh definitely three books in yeah yeah and four um come out. and then four books about 2003 or four i think yeah and so 2001 was when the film series came out but by that point i was you know 15 and uh 14 15 and into you know the white stripes and nirvana and playing guitar and and uh, it, you know oh, too hetero for wizards were you <laughs> with your hormones and your <laughs> rock and roll <laughs> and uh and so harry potter i mean especially looking at this uh this <laughs> this poster this poster looks as you know quintessentially ad adolescent as you can get really it looks like some kind of really bad fan-made poster put together by nambler yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Google Nambler, everyone. Anyone who's not aware of it, <laughs> mm, and then and then wait for the authorities to bang down your front door. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I kind of felt that by the time the film had been released, I was too cool for for school, almost, and and too cool for Hogwarts. Yeah, and even though I mean, I remember going into sixth form, and I went to a new school for sixth form, and. Uh, and I was in English class, and you know how you've, how you've got the, the the cool kids at school, and they were in my English class, and they were sat at the back of the class, and of course, and, all the cool kids were in English class, and and they were talking about how they it was the weekend after uh, the one of the last books came out. It'll have been two thousand and three, so I think had the penult penultimate book come out or something. No, the two thousand three would have been about the fifth book perhaps regardless uh one, yeah. of, one of the books had just come out and they were all going absolutely mad about how they'd uh bought it on the friday or whatever it was and stayed up late and you know completely blitzed the book on uh throughout the weekend and this really surprised me because it's like these are the cool the cool attractive kids kind mm -hmm. of admitting to each other that they read harry potter and were, were, were geeks about it um and so and so i think that was the first time i kind of realized the influence that this that this franchise had and and the type of people that it affected and that were devoutly you know fans of it um but by that point you you passed it or, or i feel i was passed and it was like this isn't something that i actively want to get involved with uh and then you know the films kept coming out and it was like, well, I don't really want to sit through eight Harry Potter films. <laughs> um, but, um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my 
brief history with ignoring Harry Potter. I was absolutely bowled over by the runtime of these films. I thought mm. the absolute nuts that you're going to do uh, a children's film at two hours, 40 minutes long. I thought that was crazy. Yeah. Um, Ambitious stuff. Uh, but but that's what we did. So I've spoken for most of this episode. So uh, you give me a taste of your history with Harry Potter and uh, and your impressions of because I'm interested about the differences between the books and the films. So a bit of your history, a bit of what you thought of the books when you were reading them, and then uh, when the films came out, if you will, please. No problem. So I first heard of Harry Potter when we had a um, a World Book Day. And, uh, you know, when they come into the school and they sort of say, these are the books that you should be reading, kids. Uh, this is Harry Potter. It won the Smarty Award for, for best book. So you should all be reading it. It's great. And sort of thought, oh, yeah, that's grand. Uh, and then when I was in year seven, um, so moving into uh, secondary school, I can't remember how it came into sort of the, the household, but we just ended up with a copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the book. Uh, right. Mum was reading us a chapter every night, and then oh. we were plowing on by ourselves because, uh, you know, younger brother. So we sort of took part in family reading sessions. Um, so we were doing a chapter a night, and we were very engrossed. And then I took the book away and started reading it avidly, and then loved it so much, dashed out and got the second one as soon as it was uh, available. Um, I'm pretty sure I was reading the third book shortly thereafter, but yeah, just absorbing them. Uh, and then we ended up having the audiobooks as well, read by Stephen Fry. And we had those on loop relentlessly. And then the film got announced and my cousins were into it as well. And we were all very excited to see the film happening. And um, as, a, as a brief sort of tangent, for all the ambition of the MCU, Warner Brothers took a hell of a gamble on this. They decided to invest 10-year contracts with a bunch of unknown child actors and say, right, you're going to be the leads in the biggest book franchise we've got going to compete with Lord of the Rings, essentially. Uh, we're going to bolster it with a lot of great supporting actors to sort of shore up the foundations. But, you know, just the ambition of it. <laughs> I mean, Daniel Radcliffe is by no means a good actor. And he's never going to not be Harry Potter. Um, but, you know, as they go on, they do a good enough job. But it's a hell of a gamble for a studio. Banking, obviously, on the popularity of Harry Potter, they couldn't lose money off it at this earlier stage. But you've got to give them credit. They they really took a risk with it, and it paid off. It really did. Um, so, yeah, basically, we were big into the Harry Potter books. Um my brother never read any of them, but he um, he loved the films, absolutely adores the films. And about two years ago, he decided, I'm finally going to read the books. Hmm. And he read them all within a ridiculous amount of time because they're relatively easy to get through for the first books and then they just keep creeping up in size. Um, but the, the first book, I, I was doing some reading around this, they wanted it to be a fairly faithful adaption. And for the most part, it is. There's barely any major changes. The only main differences are um, the Quidditch field originally had a roof over it in the book. They decided <laughs> to make that more open field. You spend more time with the Dursleys um, and sort of see things from their perspe uh, perspective in the early chapter. And uh, what was the other magic? Oh, yeah, uh, there's a character called Peeves, the poltergeist, one of the Hogwarts ghosts. And he was played by Alan Rickman. And they had him filmed. They had all the bits and bobs. But they decided just to cut him from the film because he would just keep dicking around on the set entertaining the kids and so he, he suited the role perfectly but they just couldn't have him around basically so they just cut him and no one's ever seen any of the the footage um so yeah those are really uh, and a few little bits and bobs here you know no major changes like he meets malfoy originally in the robe shop rather than you know at, right. at the uh, the hogwarts station but for the most part books one and two are pretty much direct adaptations from page to screen that's interesting uh he, alan rickman plays snape uh yes should, so how does that work how do you mean how does that work you said alan rickman played the ghost the podcast uh, uh sorry um alan rickman uh rick mail sorry rick mail oh plays... rick mail that is a damn shame 
you confused yeah. me them for a second, but that is uh, yeah, it's just slip the tongue. <laughs> yeah, um, I've completely thrown myself off. Uh, yeah, just just adding to my what I was saying. Um, so I, uh, it came out Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, the film. The the film. Uh, it came out 2001? in two thousand one. Two thousand one. But more importantly, it came out in the United States. Let me see, if Britain. Uh, in the UK, it came out on the 4th November, and in the United States, the 14th. 11 or 14th, depending on where you are. Um, just post 9-11, uh, obviously. But more importantly, from my perspective, mm -hmm. is um, it went up against Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. Yeah. And I think from my perspective, as a I mean, 15 at the time, that there is a massive gap there, I think, between Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings world. And it's a matter of saying, well, are you a grown up or are you a seven year old? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that probably had a, a massive sway as well. Uh, yeah. When when Harry Potter was was released. Um, but going back to so just just a bit, uh, I should have said that we are going to be doing uh, the first two films in the series, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and whatever the second one is. Uh, the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Chamber of Secrets, which I think we'll get into, we'll get into it. Um, so yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. This is... No, don't open that. Why are you opening that? <laughs> uh, this is the trailer for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So, positives first. I thought it was... A, Tell me what you liked. I thought it was a thoroughly enjoyable children's film. I found myself mm. entertained from beginning to end and um, I, I won't say that the two and a half hours flew by, but I thought as far as children's films go, uh, I thought it was top notch. I think the performances are, are largely excellent. Uh, it is a charming setting. It is expertly filmed. And the uh, special effects still largely hold up. I think yeah by and large they put a lot of practical effort into uh, into a lot of them yeah and as uh, as a run of the mill children's film can't complain at all uh, my criticisms i suppose come from what the series has become and <laughs> how uh, how lauded it is mm. uh, and what i mean by that is it's a great film, but I don't think it has any originality to it at all. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know if that's a controversial thing to say. Um, but I felt as though everything it did was standing on the shoulders of giants. Almost, it it, it was ripping off so many things that I felt. Well, you've taken that from there. You've taken that from there. You've taken that from there. I mean. I don't know if it translates to the United States or other parts of the world, but in Britain we have a very rich history of uh, school. It's like a school school genre, mm -hmm. don't we? Like, um, uh, is it uh, uh, is it Tom Brown? Is that the book I'm thinking of? Uh, it doesn't ring any bells with me, but I know what you're getting at. Tom, it's like Tom Brown School Days. It's or like the like Americans that. have their high school related sitcoms and their college based comedies. And we have sort of the school of hard knocks, boarding well, school. <laughs> yeah, I was right. So Tom Brown School Days. So Tom Brown School Days is an 1857 novel uh, set in 1830s at Rugby School, an English public school. And essentially, yeah, it is. It, it's, it's kind of Harry Potter, I think, um, in the sense that. Oh, what's this? Oh, well, that's the fourth one. You want to skip that? Oh, no. Why are you auto playing, you silly thing? Anyway, without going too much into that, we have a tradition in this country of uh, of writing stories about the um, school days from the perspective of, of kids of a certain age. And a lot of those in the past have been at uh, what are known down south as public schools in, in the north are known as private schools. And they are generally school boarding schools. And <clears throat> it'll follow... At <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it'll follow a... Uh, a, a central protagonist and they will um, 
learn the lessons of life and get up to mischief with their group of friends and uh and and yeah they'll they'll get roughed up at sport and all that kind of thing and what i felt harry potter is essentially as, as you're saying it's an adaptation of those traditional english uh tales of school uh wrapped in a veil of magic essentially yeah and that yeah as i say i don't want to be critical about it because there's no reason to be critical but it's just in the sense of it's a simple premise mixed with another simple premise and it's come together to create something that is far greater than the sum of its parts almost i think the um, naysayers said the same things about star wars in 1977 <laughs> well I, I suppose that's true I, I, you know i suppose when you look at what star wars is it's, it, it is those traditional uh it, it's a it's a um it was like pulp. kurosawa samurai films and flash gordon serials and it's a it's a samurai was, film and... in space mm. um so that's that's very true uh i i just as i say i was entertained but for what i was expecting it wasn't as groundbreaking as uh as as i expected it to mm. be and a lot of those so so, so I'll, I'll give you an example of just how the what i felt was a lack of real imagination and that's that um no two things so the first is when harry's in the dark is it the dark woods or something like the that? forbidden forest the, the forbidden forest which itself is a you know <laughs> it's very generic it, these were kids books oh absolutely absolutely yeah. I, i'm just i'm, I'm just it's a perfectly suitable name for a, a dark uh, unapproachable forest but, in, in a child's fantasy setting but you know it's, i still think from uh the children's books if you compare it to something like a roll doll i feel as though someone like a roll doll really does go above and beyond with the creativity and trying to subvert expectations almost and you think it's going to be this and we go that way and yeah and jk rowling never or in, in in these first two films never does anything to subvert those expectations in a mm. in a creative way and so she's in the we're in the forbidden woods and uh, Harry stumbles across this uh, ghost, uh, this uh, the dead unicorn, the, the dead unicorn, and, it's a, <laughs> and my first thought was, "That's what you went to? You went to a unicorn in a forbidden forest?" And it's like, "Oh yes, there's a evil spirits that feed that feed on the blood of unicorns or something like that." Like, oh no, it's it's cursed, Dan, to drink the blood of the unicorn, which is you know one of the it's it gives you immortality but, but it's also it, cursed. it just it just strikes me as lazy creativity to think mm. uh what could what could be in this uh what could be in this a, a, a unicorn and um uh, to be fair you see a dark gloomy wood i don't think unicorns well precisely what what is a unicorn <laughs> I doing think aragog <laughs> <laughs> but but can you appreciate where i'm coming from it's like well oh absolutely yeah why is there a unicorn in it surely unicorns are <laughs> Uh, a, a bright sprightly creatures that should be uh, galloping in meadows, in, the, or... in meadows not like what are they doing uh, traping around in forbidden... dark gloomy wood filled with monsters and giants and spiders and centaurs yeah it just i just kind of help couldn't help but think just create a new creature or something that mm. that would uh, you know we've spoken about this before as as someone who who tries to 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 be creative and and, and write um I'm right. I get enjoyment when I find myself in this predicament where I think, okay, I'm stuck. I need to come up with something that uh, that is relevant for this situation. And I don't want to half ass it just by being like, uni unicorn. Just unicorn. It's like, what, what can be in this environment of a forbidden wood that is also has a, you know, rich aura that would be valuable to a certain ghostly being? That, that makes sense you know and mm. uh, something that that would also be quite disturbing to to come upon um and that that would be exciting to me of just thinking of a treasure trove of different ideas to to inject into this world you can inject something new that 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 that, that children haven't seen or heard of before mm. but no it's like unicorn <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> why 
Uh, sorry, th this has just reminded me of. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm going to take Teen Titans as a uh, not to, uh, Titan Maxim as an example for this. Um, <laughs> the villain is planning to steal something from from that ice moon, and they go to the steam factory, which has this most amazing steam powered machine that bosses off, and it's the most inventive thing ever. It's really you know creative and off the wall, and he's giving this speech about how this steam machine works and what it does and they go holy fuck is that a giant fucking diamond <laughs> and it's, it's like no explanation needed of course it's a giant diamond and it's the same thing with the you know the dead unicorn you see a dead uniform it's like holy shit it's a dead unicorn this is a big deal <laughs> but if you have to stop and go that's that's a flu blat. you know flu blats they have the magical nasal spray and when you inhale it and you've got to go for a whole thing to explain why it's a big deal but you see a dead unicorn you know shit is getting real but surely that's the point of harry potter is to engross yourself <laughs> in this new universe where things aren't as they seem isn't isn't that the point that's always what i took it to be is i th i was expecting real originality and creativity in this <laughs> universe and in the end you, you got a bit of uh, tolkien a bit of c.s lewis i mean it, it, it picks from c.s lewis i suppose more than anyone else because c.s lewis did use these um allegories and these symbolisms and things and use them to far greater effect um you know uh, and that's i think that's that's more along the lines of what, what i was expecting if you're going to use things from our universe in in this story then use them in a way that is a bit more impactful rather than just being like it's a dead yeah. unicorn unicorns have, <laughs> have have an essence i mean i can understand exactly what you're saying and it makes sense but uh just you know because i hear nothing uh, mm. but uh gryffindor and uh Huff hufflepuff and hufflepuff. and you know all these fancy names but it seems to me like you got a lot of fancy names to describe essentially what already exists in the human world and then when she couldn't think of anything original, she just was like, see unicorn. Um, yeah. And, and that's what frustrated <laughs> me because, you know, what's I, our villain. It's a guy with a face on the back of his face. Exactly. And that is, <laughs> and that is something that appears elsewhere in literature. I'm struggling to think of it off the top of my head, but, uh, I don't know if there's something like in one of Lewis Carroll's stories about that. I think there may be, I might be completely wrong, but you know, there are, there is definitely, classic literature where that is where that occurs um you got a face on the back of someone else's head and <laughs> i mean that was a never ending story too did it really well then well mm. then there you go but not only that it's it's how um he's defeated <laughs> <laughs> just go to his side get him in the blind spot <laughs> sucker punch him from behind <laughs> well no it's it's like um his his host his host mm. was defeated when when Harry put his hands on his face, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was literally suddenly like, what the fuck oh, is going on? What yeah. the, the fuck is supposed to be happening here? He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a wizard, and he defeats this guy by putting his hand on his face, and he and he it melts. It was love, Harry. It was always love. You've got something that yeah, exactly. Um, mm. Dumbledore's like, you've got something that your mother gave you. And I'm thinking, oh that shit! No one else ever had. No, no one else ever had. And I'm thinking, shit! This is like going to be some sort of key twist going on here. She's going to like inject it in with with unicorn blood. Um, and it's like <laughs> she gave you love. And I literally, if I could have <laughs> stood up and, <laughs> and left that cinema, I'd have done it at that point. So I was just you thinking, are not going to like where some of the films go from here on out. Then <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. So I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking this. I was I was happy to accept most of it. You know, I was, as I say, I was disappointed with the lack of originality in bits and pieces, mm. but that is just like... Uh, Lazy the, writing 101. Exactly, exactly. That, you know, we've had some... I'm sure we've had better writing than that in some of your fan fictions. Um, to, to come up with such a stupid deus ex machina as you defeated him with love. It's like, well, how, how the fucking hell are there any villains in this universe what what's next a healing through the power of phoenix tears oh don't get me started on that i i got in a bit of a fight with uh with alex o over that and she was like <laughs> she, he did say earlier that phoenixes have healing tears I'm like, yes to deliberately set it up <laughs> exactly <laughs> the lazy setup to a lazy payoff just for the fact that you lampshaded it doesn't make it any better that was exactly that exactly my point it's like and that and that is one of those things that screams of you get to the end of the book and you think 
shit. How do I get out of this one? And then you go, and then you're scrolling back and you go, well, if I put Phoenix Tears Heels, great, fine, done. Book's finished. And, um, and yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, we could go through, um, a Chamber of Secrets as well, but I see Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets are essentially uh, two sides of the same coin. In fact, I, mm. I would say that the positives and the negatives are essentially the same thing. And yeah. um, and you just hit on one right there where the ending is bullshit. The ending of Chamber of Secrets. Oh, is just you bullshit. wait till Prisoner of Azkaban. If you want to talk the a Deus Ex Machina, um, a lot of people uh still go what what the hell were you thinking with with azkaban it's probably the best book but they introduce an element that breaks the universe and then is <laughs> never brought up again at all within the official canon series of books and films it's a hold on maneuver is it yeah it it makes the hold on maneuver sensible <laughs> Okay. Well, that, that it, it's it's along the same lines, but you know, for the holder maneuver, it's like why not use a droid? But at the same time, there had to be a sacrifice. But they could have solved so many problems. All the problems with where they go in the third, the the, the final chunk of the third. Well, that that'll be no interesting. Reason. That'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see where that goes. Then, um, but yeah, that just <sighs> without okay, so. I'm just thinking, do we go deeper into different things? Um, yeah, I suppose we can round up talking about philosophers, then move on to chamber, and then sort of have okay, the, yeah, any bridging stuff. We, we should really have a, a set structure for this rather than jumping all around the place. But uh, yeah, we'll work that out in subsequent weeks. Yeah, exactly. It'll become a lot more focused as we go. I, I suppose um, most of the people listening to this are going to know Harry Potter and are going to know the story of it. Yeah, so they, they're going to hate us absolutely for this. But yeah, I'll I'll give it its credit. I mean, it'd have been Jesus, um, I think it had been the best part of fifteen years, if not more, since the last time I watched the first movie. Yeah, and uh, last time my brother came home, again, he's a big fan of the films, and he said, "That's you know, it's it's quarantine. Let's just sit down and do the Harry Potters one after another in over the course of a week." And I was really dreading going back to the early ones with the young child actors sort of fumbling the way through it. Uh, but I was very charmed by it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really serviceable, well put together kids film, and you know Chris Columbus knows knows his stuff. Um, it, all all the cast are, are great. The children are passable for what they are, um, which is children. Um, yeah, it's it's just got a really nice throwback vibe to it. And I, I remember watching at least the first five movies at the cinema. Actually, I think the eighth movie was the only one I didn't see, which is a bit of a shame, really, um, at the cinema. Um, it, not really hating them, not really liking them. They were just something that happened, then I moved on. Um, but, you know, sort of peripheral aware by culture of, of the significance. Um, but they really are the Star Wars of their generation. I can understand why. Um, I, I think it's odd that people our age would still cling on to them as like the best franchise ever and uh, yeah. if you don't agree with me about harry potter then we're not going to get on as people uh, which is very strange but uh, yeah what well, one thing as well uh that's always made me laugh is uh why do they have slithering house it turns out nothing but evil people why don't they just the moment anyone gets picked for slithering go oh that's great just follow us here into this back room and then you just hear abracadabra, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just makes no sense why you keep a house that's regularly churning out uh, Fred West and yeah. Adolf Hitler's and everyone else, essentially... and still give them the power of a god. It's <laughs> essentially a, a, a marker that you're a dick, really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Warner Brothers bought their film rights to the book in 1999 for reported one million pounds 1.65 wow. million dollars that seems a bit of a bargain now ah but the trade-off for that was that jk rowling's has complete creative control which is why they're having such shenanigans at the moment with all the all the political controversy going on around it hmm. she has full creative control of the entire project uh and she's more than made uh god knows how many billions she's made off of it 
<laughs> but oh, it has made yeah. things very awkward for the studio at this point. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things that uh, that surprised me, just going structurally now through the uh, film, thinking about it, you mentioned the beginning of the film with the, what are they called? The Fernandes. Yeah. One of the things that struck me initially, and it even follows through to the second film, is the tonal shift from when the film is with the family at the beginning of the film to the rest of it. And because I, f I feel it's very... Um, what was the film I thought of in my head? Uh, there was... It's very slapstick and very. It comes across almost as a uh, like a uh, da, 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 like a an episode of the Young Ones, possibly. But I'm thinking more like the beginning of uh, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or something like that, um, okay. <clears throat> where it feels like an alternate universe, but not in the sense that. Um, that it's a wizarding world. It feels like an alternate universe in, like, uh, in a. Um, I'm just trying to think of the kids from Willy Wonka. <laughs> Charlie Bucket. Oh, Veruca Salt. Veruca uh, Mike Salt. TV. Where you... Augustus Gloop. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Uh, Violet Beauregard. Was... That got. Yeah, but what do they get? That might have been a bad, a bad comparison. Um, but this. Uh, sort of larger than life um scenario that doesn't feel as though it belongs in the rest of the film mm. and uh, th 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 i'm sure that that comes from the book does it yeah yeah but it's it's difficult to sum up really um it's a lot less comedic and a lot more abusive the way it's conveyed in the book but it's almost like we've got this uh, uh, like say larger than life wizarding world and then the human world that needs to sort of account for it mm. happening and it, it doesn't feel quite cohesive I, I know what you're getting at yeah. it's almost like it feel like oh this is the real world and and to make it fit with this magical one the oddities need to stand out all the more yeah 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 and I could yeah, never. Right, difficult to sum up. <laughs> and I could never understand why they're so averse to Harry going away to boarding school. I'm like, yeah, well, you would have thought they want rid of him. Yeah, he does nothing but you know frustrate you and annoy you, and yet you're so mm. determined to keep him in your house. <laughs> it's like, what? I don't, I don't understand the uh, the motivation of this. Yeah, because he's going to leave in the next few years anyway. Yeah, I, that was that. It baffled me, and that 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 was another thing where I thought. <laughs> Just explain this. I can understand. Make him more of a servant, um, mm. uh, which they never particularly do because it's like they're always hesitant to give him jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Because they don't trust him. And he just seems to be a constant thorn in their sight. So it's like, they're just dicks. That's what yeah, it comes they... down to. It's, it's purely the case of they don't want him to go because it's something that he'd want to do. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I could accept that. Uh, just, mm. just portrayed a little better uh okay so da, 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 da. they go through a bit of a journey because i really like richard griffiths as uh as an actor and i thought he was perfectly cast to play um Dernan dursley uh vernon dursley but as the films go go on they get more and more of a reduced role and i'm pretty sure he had a stroke at some point as well because it doesn't surprise me yeah they they very much make the dursleys cameos and make them more comedic hmm. uh, it, it's it, you'll know what what i mean by the time you get to about number five but it's very odd hmm. they should have just cut them all together frankly but uh, i've seen i've seen that as a criticism for all the books because apparently all the all the books start out with him with hmm. harry being back at home and, yeah that's usually uh, the best parts him fighting against the system that hates him no oh, really that surprised me even hmm. from the second film i thought this is a I just felt a bit Force Awakens. <laughs> it's like you, you're just trying to make everything rhyme uh, to give yourself a starting point. And, um, uh, I, you know, I mean, I don't know how boarding schools work, actually, if, if they force you to go home during the summer. But I figured, well, if they're all staying over Christmas, why have they got to go home during the summer? Uh, Teachers doing their spare time. 
<laughs> it's, 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 like, it's, it's a wizard school, surely they've yeah. done it. <laughs> it. Nothing's moved on, because <laughs> unlike, say, university, you know, the lecturers have to constantly do theses, and the there's always something new to learn. But in magic, they're so entrenched in like, what happened a thousand years ago. The curriculum doesn't change at all. Mm. Mm. So what are the teachers doing over the course of the summer holidays? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh sorting out sorting out's cool uh, sorting out i'm gonna try and um compliment things now so as, as i said at the start it's an enjoyable children's film it it does its job you know as, i won't say flawlessly i was gonna say flawlessly it does if you don't think about it it does its job flawlessly <laughs> if, if, if you if, if you ignore the flaws the film is perfect <laughs> <laughs> if you're a child and you're happy to go along with the ride i can understand why why you uh, why they love it as much as they do um as someone who spent a lot of time in king's cross station uh just mo- moseying around not for any particular reason uh it, it, it was nice <laughs> to see it um blah, 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 blah. gryffindor hufflepuff ravenclaw and slytherin the first two films hufflepuff and ravenclaw may as well not even be there uh yep. they really don't invest in them at all uh slytherin as you say is <laughs> it's just like it may as well have badges with evil yeah uh, on they them. might as well just have like skulls and maybe two cross desert eagles <laughs> <laughs> and another thing as well that uh, i mean maybe i'm uh i'm reading into it too much but I, I thought it might be cool to have um the three main uh, uh characters harry ron and uh hermione who for years i thought was Hermione, uh, as, Hermione. I'm, as I'm sure many kids did. Um, I I thought for a second, hmm, are they going to split them up into different houses? This could be quite yeah, an interesting dynamic. Interesting. Uh, but no, they're all in Gryffindor because they're all no, if... generic protagonist types. Harry Potter tells us that like should be with like, which is funny because that's essentially what Voldemort's hoping to achieve, but Hogwarts is already employing segregation. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the criticisms I saw as well, was that there's no real hero's journey from the very first book oh, to the end of the book. It's dreadful, yeah. Harry just gets lucky. Mm. Harry gets everything handed to him, um, including his ability to defeat evil with the power of love given to him by his mum and stuff like that. Just it, Nothing uh, is earned by Harry. Yeah, and it, I, I found myself thinking at points, you know, is he the original Mary Sue in some mm. respects? I mean, he, he's not because... He doesn't know everything in the sense that you know someone like Ray does. There's there's a uh, a point where he's in a classroom with uh, Snape and Snape uh, picks on him, and mm. uh, and he just kind of sits there and says, "Yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, but aside from that, he's pretty much perfect all the time. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways, he he manages to look well, himself out of every scenario he gets into. He he, he looks out of it, but it's never because he knows the answers. Um, mm which I suppose would make him not a Mary Sue, because Mary Sue's good yeah. at everything, and everyone yeah. likes them. Yeah, uh, well, that's whereas what I mean. Whereas Harry's, Harry's just incredibly lucky. <laughs> it's it's a really strange dynamic as well when every single person that he comes into contact with knows who he is. Mm. And I feel like that makes him seem... Uh, yeah, he, he he's not a Mary Sue but he has the aura of someone that should be. And essentially, at the end of the day, it's not very often, or from the two films I've seen, that bad things befall him in a way that uh, have lasting consequences. Mm. Um, so, I, you know, but, you know, it, it just, rather than, it just strikes me as, uh, as I was saying earlier, quite unoriginal writing. More than yeah, anything else, I don't. I don't yeah, think it's Mary it, it Sue. It is based very much on tropes. And, yeah, I don't think it's pre-existing law. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's Mary Sue. I just think it's a lack of knowing how to uh, grow a character um, via um, trials and tribulations that have a lasting impact. Um, just bear with me a second. In this child's book series about eugenics. Ultimately, that's what it's building towards. <laughs> Brief look inside Dan's daily lifestyle. 
Ah, the number of times we'd be sitting down to watch a film and we'd be right in the emotional crux of a scene and, oh, no, I'm off there. No, sorry. Hey, he's I'm, back. I'm here. Yeah, there was a knock at the door, but they seem to have run away. Um, <laughs> Those damn neighbour kids. Damn neighbour kids. They're flaming dog poop bags. Uh, so where were we? Uh, okay, so uh, sorting uh, hat. Uh, unoriginal. Zero, unoriginal. No, I, I, I'm going to try and be positive. Um, okay, so... Uh, it's a fun frolicking fantasy film for all the family if lord of the rings is a bit too slow and pacey for the kids this helped usher in uh fantasy cinema for and, and the genre again because it had been a good long while since we'd had fantasy films yeah it was all sci-fi and horror but mainly it was sci-fi dominating television and then you had buffy sort of introducing it back into the lexicon and then the one-two punch of harry potter and lord of the rings the same christmas it did bring the genre back in big style, and we've not really done anything too much with it since, which is a shame. Mm. Yeah, sorry, no, I'm just going through the story. I was going to pick out bits and pieces as I'm going through the uh, the story. Uh, but no, you, you're absolutely right. Um, so yeah, Harry becomes the seeker of the Quidditch team, uh, which again is another one of those things. I've been like, mm. he really? Everything it, just happens to him. It's... There's no reason for him to be the best seeker on the team. No. And you would think that, I mean, granted, J.K. Rowling never knew as she was writing the first book that it would span into all these books. So you can forgive her for not thinking too far ahead. But that would have been a nice arc over uh, over a couple of books, uh, you know, to, to have been watching from the sidelines and then enter this. You know, it, it feels more like an, uh, a stage of adulthood, really, to, yeah. to, to enter the the um, the domain of the. Uh, older kids mm. um but yeah <laughs> it's like uh one of the first ever first year students to become a seeker and it's like oh he's, well, yeah well i don't know I, I mean i suppose i'll I'll do it yeah sure and then he, he can... never loses a game yeah oh and is immensely wealthy as well let's mm. not forget that all the canuts and the shekels <laughs> uh so da -da 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 -da. Uh, discover a three-headed dog named Fluffy. Fluffy. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Why does Ron need to be on the night piece in order to play the chess game? Yeah, I I wondered that too. I couldn't understand it. I don't know. Uh, it's like, yeah, I've got to I've got to sacrifice myself. I'm like, just get off the horse. <laughs> stand next to the horse. <laughs> At any point. Or stand under the horse. If you've got to be on the piece, you can just stand on the, the leg or something. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, no, sacrifice me. Execute me. Okay, whatever. How did, how did Quirrell do it then? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Quirrell managed to get it. Who the, who the hell knows, man? Uh, bottled phoenix tears. <laughs> So the children later find out that Fluffy is guarding the Philosopher's Stone, an object that has the power to turn any metal into gold. Da, 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 da. Uh, Harry suspects they suspect it's Snape. Something. Now, I appreciate that they want to. Oh wait, no, is this the first film or the second film? That's yeah. that's that's the second film. I'm thinking of where, uh, um, not Dumbledore, not Dumbledore. What's his name? Quirrell, Hagrid? Hagrid, that's the one. Um, they're the only two I know the names of. <laughs> <laughs> where where Hagrid, Hagrid gets arrested. That's the second film. Yep. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, yep, yeah, chess game. Uh, which is, you know, a credit to it. It uh, introduces kids to chess, which is great. Um... And then it just falls off a cliff, as seems to be mm -hmm. a, in the two films I've seen a bit of a tradition. Uh, after getting past the tires, Harry, Harry discovers that it was the Defense Against a Dark Arts teacher. Who else would it be? Um, Snape? <laughs> 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 no, we, we, we're following the tropes here, Matt, with the tropes of misdirection. Uh, it, it would have been more original for it actually to have been Snape at this point. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, so obvious that we didn't even think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's clearly... But, again, so it is uh, Quirrell, but this does a Frozen, and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, where mm. it has a moment. A Hans moment. Yeah, exactly, where the camera is on him and there's no one else in mm -hmm. the room, and 
it's incredibly dishonest uh, f- filmmaking and storytelling to have the uh, to have the villain make an expression that is true to their alter ego character, but not who they actually are. Um, yeah, it's incongruous with the the narrative threads. Yeah, it's 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 cheap, and mm. I didn't like that. Um, but yeah, he's the big bad, and he removes his turban, and Voldemort lives on the back of his head. It would have made more sense if he was an unwilling host. I thought that, yeah. yeah like the, the whole troll in the dungeon part, what was he aiming to achieve? It... Uh, uh, I guess it was so he oh it was so he could sneak into the the Fluffy's room, wasn't it, I guess, but but he's there in the bathroom when they finally defeated the troll, so that clearly wasn't his aim at all. Oh, I can't remember. They do ex- explain it. Yeah. He just something along the lines of, Yes, I was the one that released the troll. Yeah. And then there's an awkward pause and then he moves on to another thing. <laughs> We should we should just rename these sections "shitting on all your favorite films." <laughs> <laughs> if you like Harry Potter, then you are a retard. <laughs> um, no, it is. It's just a shame that it is perfectly serviceable in every in every way, and that can kind of sum it up for me. Uh, mm. And and but it's more interesting to rip apart the. I mean, that's that's just you know how I how I deal with things. Yeah, it's in, more in general, interesting it's more entertaining. To... Yeah, but it yeah. So okay, well let's go through the final bit of the film and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up with this. Uh, Harry Harry recovers in the school's hospital wing. Dumbledore. That's another thing that that bothers me with this type of film. It's like there are only three three kid four kids. It's like there are only four kids in the entire yeah school. In the entire school. It's... <laughs> <sighs> and I got so annoyed at the end scene where. Yeah. Um, where Slytherin wins the year with the number of points, yep, and then through sheer hard work and study, and then Dumbledore's just like psych bitches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give Harry, Ron, and Hermione just like random points, just you know because because of friendship and love, and because <laughs> because they break the rules and go gallivanting yeah. in the dungeons and things it's like. This is ridiculous, Dumbledore. They broke all the rules, and for that they've been rewarded. They must, it, again, it reminds me of that Simpson episode where it's like, and in the end they were saved by, oh, I don't know, <laughs> Mo. And that's Dumbledore's attitude for the the points awarded at the end. One of my all-time favourite Simpsons moments there, uh, and Simpsons episodes. Yeah, and I just found myself getting progressively more and more, after enjoying mm. myself for so long and thinking, it's a kid's film let it let it wash let it wash the end just tipped me over the edge and then all of the uh bad points were just like no you know what i am gonna pick up on all this shit because it's lazy it is lazy storytelling wait a minute i've i've just thought about it he he specifically says you know like 20 points to ronald weasley for the best game of wizarding chess i've ever seen and it's like so you were watching <laughs> you you could see the chess match why didn't you help <laughs> <laughs> You're like a triple S rank wizard. Why the fuck did you send these three kids to fight the demon man? I don't understand it. It's also like he's, he's, he's doing the maths in his head. He's thinking, all right, <laughs> <laughs> making it up as he goes along. How many points have Slytherin got now? <laughs> Seven points to Harry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I need them to be over by one. <laughs> so uh, eight. <laughs> They're like if that makes it a draw. Number did I say seven? I meant eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me. Um. So yeah, that is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone. And yeah, we've said it a dozen times. It is perfectly enjoyable. If you don't think about it too much, um, I hate the end of it. I think it's stupid. We're going to talk more about hating the end of it in. Uh, in uh, in Chamber of Secrets.